Um, so hey guys, welcome to G2R. I'm Alex McLean. I'm one of the leaders here alongside Isabella and Joel. Um, and our heart for G2R, which stands for Genesis to Revelation, is family, transparency, oh hey, and rightfully dividing the word of truth. Those are our three aims. And this is something that we've created by God's grace as a comfortable space for everybody to grow. Um, but for everyone to be honest, and even the topic that I'm going to touch on today is really going to help us to, by God's grace, cultivate an atmosphere that, that reaches those aims, that achieves those things that we desire to, to do by God's grace. Um, so I'm just going to open up in prayer. Um, and then what we're going to do, I'm going to ask everyone to share their name, just so we can hear everyone's voices, and share one thing that God has shown them in this time. Um, just one thing. Keep it nice and brief, please. Um, one minute max um, because we do want to make sure we have ample time to go through what God has shared with us all um, and then go into a time of discussion after. So I'm just going to pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to grow together as your children, Lord, to, to learn, Lord, to be challenged, Lord God, and ultimately to continue to um, be sanctified, Lord, to continue to, to mature so that we look more like you in every area of our lives. Father God, I pray that today, Lord, the word that goes forth will be a word in season for your people, Father God, so that they, Father God, will continue to prove your good, perfect, and acceptable will in their lives. So we pray that you just have your way this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Fantastic. So I'm just going to pick names at random. Um, Adrian, could you start <laughs> off for us? Just give us your name. And one thing that God's shown you this season, one minute match, remember, guys. Sure, sure, sure. So, yeah, my name is Adrian. Um, so, yeah, what God has been showing me and what God has been speaking to me about is just um, fatherhood in him, mm. um, how God um, is equated to our father um, and how generally you look at fathers day to day, how they're very caring, they're very loving, they're very thoughtful for their children. Um, so, um, and it's very similar to what we are in God. Um, yeah. that God loves us so much that his plans for us um, are so good. Like generally fathers have that plan for their children. Um, yeah. That God is the best father that anyone could, um, can equate, can actually relate to. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's what I've been learning. Um, Trying try to keep it under a minute, but yeah. Amen. I've been learning it. Thank you for that, bro. Um, yeah, Joel, let's go to you. Uh, hello, yeah, my name's Joel. Um, what what I've learned from this season, um, you know, I think I think one thing I've really drawn from this season, especially something that actually connected to what we spoke about last week, um, was just actually the the importance of our testimonies and how it actually relate. Like, you know, all of our testimonies are not necessarily the same, but my testimony or someone else's testimony might be able to link, and then we can able to grow um, in those testimonies and grow in our situations that we're actually going through together as Christians. Amen. Something I've learned. Brilliant. Isabella. Hi guys, I'm Isabella Grace. Um, one thing that I've learned is how fleeting life is. Um, mm. Just a quite short, uh, there's just been so much loss recently. Um, mm. And I feel like now is the best time for those who don't have hope to hear about Jesus. And if you... Yeah haven't taken Jesus seriously and you know you're kind of scared about what you're going to end up tomorrow I'm not even saying this as a means of just scaring but I genuinely feel like now is the time to really pick up your cross and take Jesus seriously because you know people are going left right and center and you don't even know you know what tomorrow brings so mm. yeah I mean that's that's kind of a negative note to start the call that's, it's real though <laughs> that's what we want that g 2 r we want to keep it real and transparent thank you for that Isabella Els Hi, um, yeah, my name's Aliden, or Els for short. Um, I think God has just been speaking to me sort of about being content um, yeah. in this time, just with him um, yeah. and not really, you know, necessarily being distracted with other things or having other things to do, but just, um, yeah, relying on him really for your 
comfort joy because obviously for a while we couldn't really see people um, mm. and stuff. so yeah just kind of being content with him yeah Amen. thank mm. you that's an okay that's an okay you there okay cool we might come back to you uh mr pc um my name's ira uh, aka mr pc <laughs> sometimes zoom keeps it as mr pc <laughs> but um yeah one thing i would say i've learned in this period is definitely trust and patience and when you're trusting god and being patient with a word to come to pass uh, mm. it's all about keeping consistent uh, rather yes. than uh, stopping working because you're still waiting for a word um, yeah so yeah just remaining focused and working while you're trusting and being patient in god amen thank you for that what a blessing simi if you could share with us as well hi um hey. um i would say god has shown me this season um his essence how his essence um exceeds his works i would say yeah. and just worshiping him for who he is before what he does um, for me so um i would say he's taught me that worship is a selfless act um that i should take time out of my day to just praise him for who he is before anything um i've also been studying exodus and i've just kind of read it in a new light so just seeing how you know god actually took the israelites out of egypt so they can worship him um other than just saving them um from the egyptians it was so he could get the praise and the worship um okay. yeah so i think just yeah just in terms of his nature and how he just deserves the devotion because of who he is amen thank you simi brilliant michelle hey everyone um my name is michelle um there's two things i think um it's like spending time with god and how important it is mm -hmm. um and how that builds a relationship with god and it's just been trying to teach me it's been really hard but to spend more time with god and less time on my phone um, mm. and another thing is just trusting god through your circumstances um, right. regardless of what's going on around you just to focus on god and just to continue to trust in him amen amen samson if you can hear us if you're there samson share with us Okay, I'm not sure if your audio is connected. No worries. Um, Daniel. Um, hi, my name is Daniel. Um, through this season, I would say, just like Michelle, um, God's been showing me, teaching me how to, that I should spend more time with him. Not only just having like my morning fellowship, because mm. just like when you eat, you need breakfast lunch and dinner mm. so it's like my morning fellowship is my breakfast but then i'm skipping my rest of my meals so it's like mm. to have more time with him and to even trust him trust him through that when things that you're praying for don't seem like they're coming to pass or nothing seems like it's happening or it seems like it's going the complete opposite way mm. but to trust him because he works even though you don't see it so yeah that's that's what i've been shown in this season fantastic thank you ebony uh i think um for me just kind of a deeper understanding of who like jesus is mm. Um, and then also the important the importance of just reading like the word every day and mm. remaining consistent. Amen. Consistency. Thank you. Um, Sophia. Hi, my name is Sophia, and um, I would say the main well one of the main things that God has taught me through this season is to manage your time better. Mm. Um, and manage my time better in time specifically because um, I felt like when I was praying up there God was basically saying to me um, well specifically he said to me um, don't get distracted or you'll get left behind um, mm. and that really resonated with me because sometimes in life we can get so caught up particularly during this time trying to plan ourselves for the next year 
plan ourselves because the economy don't allow yourself to get distracted by the members of the group first and above yeah. ourselves. So yeah, that's I'd say the main thing that we've learned in this season. Mm, thank you for that. Well done, guys. I keep it to the one minute. I'm Rashid. If you're there. Okay, you want to just like look at me looking, but I think I can name. So what's the question? Oh, no worries. So we're just saying our name and we're saying one thing that we've learned this season or one thing that God showed us. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, so uh, my name's Rashid. Um, I think one thing that um, you know, it was kind of just to be um, grateful, essentially, because we're um, mm. going through hard times right now. And I think Absolutely. Today, our, like, nothing amazing is happening currently, but just the fact mm. that we've been able to through this season without any loss or any bad news in itself is a blessing so i think that's one of the main things that i've been able to take from this time of season amen thank you rashid appreciate that ryan so good to have you if you could share us your name and one thing god showed you this season um it's a whole host of things but i think the main one is preparation and mm -hmm. um just making sure that i'm using my time wisely in this time so that when it comes to sharing with others i'm able to do so effectively so just basing my life and my time around first peter three fifteen. Mm. beautiful thank you for that toby if you could share with us your name and one thing you've learned this season toby are you there okay cool um l if you could share with us um your name and one thing you've learned this season, or one thing God's been showing you? Um, yeah, my name is Lems, and I don't know, I think this season uh, I learned more, like, to appreciate life a little bit more, mm. because you tend to realise that things don't really matter the way you think they do, mm. and that, you know, that we tend to value the wrong things. And I, I started reading right. Ecclesiastes, and that, that kind of put it in perspective for me. Wow. Where, where King Solomon's basically realizing after everything, like nothing meant anything, and that's yeah. the only thing you have to hold on to is God. Wow. Thank you so much for that. And welcome to G2R. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Um, and lastly, Ruva, if I haven't, if I've gone through everyone, I think Ruva, one thing you've learned this season, and then we'll go into our time of exhortation. Hi, I'm Ruva. So um, one thing I'll probably say I've learned and still learning is my identity. Because like mm -hmm. the way I see myself and the way Christ sees me is not always the same. Yes. So it's just my identity that's like I'm learning and still learning. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So I'm, I'm so grateful for this opportunity, guys, because as you know, G G2 has already said it's built upon fans family transparency and rightfully dividing the word of truth and this is a platform where we can grow as a family where everyone's on that same journey with christ together at different points to share their their journey their testimony you know last week's segment on testimonies was amazing i was so encouraged um and that's the nature that we want to continue g2r with um and today the title of the exhortation is going to be mirror mirror and you'll understand why I've called it that as we, as we go into it. But before we do, I think it's fair to say that everyone who's spoken has mentioned, you know, a realisation of, of what's important, you know, especially in these trying times and these times where people are falling left, right and centre. We're starting to really be sober to, OK, what is life actually about? What is the essence of why I'm here? As Ruth has said, what is my identity? And we want to explore this today. I want you to know that G2Y is a space where no stone is left unturned. We want there to be questions. You know, we can't promise we will answer all of them, but hopefully by God's grace, through his Holy Spirit together, we can address some of the difficult questions that we may be facing today. So just to give you an update to those of you that haven't been to G2R before, the way we work is we do a 30 minute exhortation throughout your free to ask questions in the chat. And then we go into more of a focused discussion where we really kind of grapple with some of the things we've spoken about and maybe address some questions that you may all have in your heads. Um, and we, we do that together in a discussion format. So I want you to know it's a safe place. Um, sit back, you know, listen, absorb, 
ask questions and then get ready for our discussion time after. So without further ado, um, let's get into it. Put a thumbs up in the comments box if you can see my presentation, which should be coming up shortly. So I need to know from you guys whether you guys can see it. Just share my screen. Just let me know if you guys can see it. Just put some thumbs up in the comments. Brilliant. Brilliant. Oh, here we go. Thank you, Lord. So, mirror, mirror. And the question I've put there is, what do you see? I'm pretty sure all of us in this season have had an opportunity to look in the mirror, whether that's spiritually or physically, and ask ourselves, what do we see? Where are we at? And it's interesting because when I was praying about this topic, it's like I, I took myself back to the 1st of January, you know, everyone was on the 2020 vision flex and, you know, seeing things clearer. But what I believe God is saying to us actually in this season is that I want you to see yourself clearer. Yes, you know, 2020 vision has that aspect of people seeing everything else, but I want you to see where you're at. And the essence of what we're going to go in today, into today is going to touch on some of these things. So my first question to all of you is what is our mirror and i'm talking about all of you individually as believers or as just people that have come out of curiosity today what is your mirror as we know we live in a society where everything is competing for your attention we are all conformed by something but the question is what are we conformed by and i've put a few things here at the side we've got the celebrity culture we've got hollywood um, we've got social media all of these things can either project things onto us or we can receive things from them i.e mirroring them so maybe a standard we see in culture we then mirror in our own lives and our own ideals so it's a question for us to consider what is our mirror and i want you guys just to briefly comment what other things do you think exist today that people mirror i've only put a few here but in your opinion what other things can you mirror your partner isabella said your family your friends excellent what else what else comes to people's minds parent massive one jesus of course as our father and our example anybody else things you watch music other people's standards brilliant brilliant these are great anything else <laughs> word 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 role models fashion that's a big one that is a massive one fashion is key like jokes quickly boot cuts are coming back in fashion you know imagine when we were younger we didn't notice that boot cuts were dead we wore them but when we got older once the fashion dictated that they were no longer in style suddenly we had to mirror it it's very interesting that as i said there's so many things in life that are competing to influence us <laughs> your favorite instant influence of societal norms this is good guys i have boot cuts until five years ago <laughs> fantastic why is isabella written my name oh my goodness well yeah these are all such valid points and I, and I pose this question for this reason that whatever is out there we will mirror to some extent whatever our attention is focused on we will mirror it in some small way or another so obviously we know as believers we are called to mirror jesus right and if we mirror jesus then who did jesus mirror and i want to pause here for a second because i feel like this point is very um, imperative to what we're going to go into today jesus perfectly mirrored the father we see quotes throughout scripture that says if you've seen me you've seen the father okay so perfect unity involves us mirroring him. Now, just to unpack that a little bit, as Jesus' followers and as God's children, because of believing in Jesus, there is a train of unity that runs along from the father to the son to his children. And as Adrian was touching on earlier, this is why it's so amazing that not only can we have Jesus as our friend, but we can have him as our father. And that's a beautiful Trinitarian, as I call it, understanding because God
God is three in one. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, how do we mirror Jesus? Jesus copes with that by providing his Holy Spirit. And the Spirit is the one that guides us in doing the things that Jesus does. Jesus himself, while he's here on earth, says, listen, I don't know what you guys are on. I don't know what your fashion is saying, but I only do what I see the Father doing. If the Father wears boot cuts, I wear boot cuts. If the Father does this, I do that, you know? So he wasn't interested about being swayed by every wind of doctrine or what the Greco-Roman culture was saying at the time. He was interested in mirroring one thing and one thing only. So I want to submit to you today, you know, can we be confident enough to take that same approach? You know, in a society, as I said, that's com continually competing for our attention, how will we still mirror Jesus in a time where it's not even cool to do so anymore, or maybe it becomes illegal. Could I be speaking prophetically here? We see the way the world is going, and we know that sooner rather than later, Christians will begin to get persecuted for their faith. It's already happening in other countries. In the West, we're very fortunate. But I believe that this is a challenge for us, and what I want to do is kickstart a self-introspective journey, which means to look within first and think to yourself, okay, what am I mirroring? And am I confident enough to go forward mirroring Christ even when the heat gets turned up? Because the intensity is only going to rise. So the Holy Spirit in us, which indwells in us, it lives in us, is there to testify of Christ as we walk out the works pre-prepared for us. That's Ephesians 2.10. You know, good works have been set out for us and the Spirit comes to live in us so that we can walk out these works. The Spirit is simply there to testify of Christ. And now I pose the last question. What in our life are we doing that doesn't mirror him? What in our life are we doing that doesn't mirror him? Because our prayer, I hope for us all, is that when people see us, they see Christ. Because the word says it's no longer I who live, but Christ that lives in me. Who are we mirroring? So, in terms of mirroring now, I believe this season God has been showing his children what they actually look like. You know, the funny thing about a mirror is without a mirror, you can't actually see certain impurities, certain marks on your skin, certain things that are on you without looking into a mirror. So I've put here, what you see is what you address. And James 1, 23 to 25 gives this perfect analogy about hearing the word of god but also doing it and this is what it says for anyone who's a hearer of the word and not a doer he's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror for he observes himself goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was i want to pause there which one of you would go into the mirror girls specifically i'm going to speak to you first notice that your makeup is not blended and then walk out the house and not do anything about it I'm pretty sure none of you would do that. Because why? You've seen that something needs to be addressed. So what do you do? You take out your blender and you address it. Man them, same for you now. You approach the mirror and you see that you've got a bogey hanging. Which one of you, <laughs> before an interview even, let's intensify the situation, will go into the mirror, see the bogey hanging and not address it? This is the analogy we get from James as he tells us about being a hero and a doer. Mr. PC said, never, never. But just here it gives the remedy. It says, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hero, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. I want to submit to you today, address what you see. God is not condemning you. He's allowed this season to show you where you're really at to show you what is actually in front of you, to show you what you're actually mirroring. And this perfect law of liberty that the scripture is talking about is Christ. And how do we know that? We're going to see further on that it says where the spirit is, there is liberty. And that spirit is the same spirit that lived in Christ and now lives in us. So in order for us to be hearers and doers of the word, we need the Holy Spirit. But you know what? Even on a practical sense, we need to be honest with ourselves. And the Holy Spirit is there to, to prompt us and to show us these 
things, the bogey or the unblended makeup so that we can address them. I encourage you, brothers and sisters in Christ, examine yourself because when you examine yourself, when you look at yourself and you're honest, it lays the foundation for the fruit of maturity. No one ever matured by thinking that they were fine the way they were. You know, I hear so many um, rhetorics this, in this generation. Oh, I don't need no one. I'm fine how I am. Um, I'm not going to change these toxic traits. Oh, if this is what you get with me. All of that stuff, it's an ignorance. It's, it's you going into the mirror and just forgetting what you look like. Or in fact, far, far worse, comforting yourself to stay how you are because you know that change is uncomfortable. As I said, this word is to challenge you. And I don't want you to see this word as a meal. I saw, heard a great quote today from Matt Chandler. He said, I don't want you to see what I share with you as a meal. I want you to see it as a vitamin. I want you to take this as a vitamin so that it propels you to go and dig into the meat of the word for yourself. And this is what G2R is about. It's about maturing together. The same way I'm sharing is the same way that God is teaching me. I'm not higher than you. You're not lower than me. We're on this journey called the race of faith and we know where it ends as we continue to follow Christ who's leading us so Paul goes on in Corinthians to, to put it like this when I was a child I spoke as a child I understood as a child I thought as a child but when I became a man I put away childish sins in short what do you need to put away which you know God is looking at you and telling you to address what do you need to put away so that you can mature as you walk in this faith with Christ as I said, everybody's at different stages. And the beauty of the body of Christ is that there are people that have already walked the path that you're walking or you're about to walk. And the beauty is that God says, listen, if you come into a community of believers, like we're here tonight in G2R, you can grow as you learn and examine yourself. You can learn from other people's stories, but you can also apply what they've gone through and learn for, to apply it now. I, say, I sum up the gospel like this. Our lives are lived as a response to the marvellous work of Christ. We have a regenerated heart and an indwelling spirit that leads us in a new way of life. We don't do things like we used to. We do things the way the spirit leads us to. And some of you might be saying, okay, but right, how, how, do I even, how do I even know? How do I even know what to address? How do I even, where do I start? Well, well, here we go. Ultimately, we address what we see by looking to Christ. He embodies all that we need. But in looking to him, let's ask ourselves this question. And for me, the gospel and, and the message of the law and the prophets is summed up as this. Two commandments. Love your neighbor as yourself and love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, everything that's within you. Those two things are the consummation of love. So ask yourself this question right now. The way that you will grow, and I can tell you for a fact, is when you remove any obstacle that blocks your ability to love as Christ would love. Some of you know that I'm engaged to the wonderful Isabella Grace. And one thing I constantly ask myself is, what is blocking me from loving her the way that Christ would love her? That's the way that I'm going to grow. I'm not going to grow saying that I'm always right. I'm not going to grow saying that this is what you get and I don't need to change. I'm going to address what I see by asking myself, what is blocking my ability to love? And what I love about G2I, you know, I've had some people already come and share testimonies of them really analyzing and seeing that, you know what? I had the same problem or issue that was blocking me from, from loving my family, blocking me from, from loving my friends, blocking me from trusting people. And these are real things that have to be addressed. But the beauty is we don't just say love and move on. No, we address the hurt, we address the trauma, the pain, we receive healing and then love can flow and have its perfect work in us. First John 4, 17 puts it perfectly. It says, love has been perfected among us in this, and it's talking about what's coming next, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. What that basically means is Jesus was the epitome of love in this world before they crucified him. And now we are in the world in that same way. Just here to be an expression of God's love to everyone. Now we know that that's difficult. And you know me, I like to be practical. So what are some of the practical ways we can address what we see? As I said, how can we practically address the question 
of what is blocking our ability to love as Christ would. Well, as I said, first of all, you examine yourself. Be honest. What do those you trust say about you? And what we're doing with g 2 here, we're building a community of trust by God's grace. So that even anybody that's in here that says, you know what, Alex, the way you did something or the way you did this, you know, I'm not too sure about that. And by God's grace, we will all have the humility to receive that and be honest and examine ourselves and trust that when we call each other to account, it's not to condemn, but it's to help prune and mature because that's what our father does. So we should also mirror that. The second thing, and this was key for me, understanding you have blind, blind spots. There are things about yourself that you just won't be able to see. It's very, it's very simple. And those around you that you love and trust will be able to see it because they're looking from outside. When you understand that you're able to humble yourself and say, you know what, there's some weight to what they're saying and I want to take it on board and address it. Next, intentionality. How will you be intentional? You know, you can't see, as I said, the makeup unblended in the mirror and not be intentional about changing it. You get your brush out and you correct it. The same way with anything that is brought to your attention, you go in prayer and you address it. You have accountability. GE2I is also set up to be a place of accountability. By God's grace, hopefully we'll be setting up some group chats soon. But we want to stay accountable to each other. Because when we're accountable to our brothers and sisters, that's actually the safest place. I was reading scripture yesterday and it said, who would take an offense or a problem in the church to an unbeliever? when the safest place should be the church. And we know that there's been unfortunate circumstances where the, the church or the place or company of believers hasn't been safe. But I'm all about being the change that I want to see. And I want to submit to you guys that G2R is building a place that is safe so that you can be accountable in a safe environment by God's grace. Next, personal reflection. This is so important. Being introspective is the trait of someone that's mature. Someone that can look at themselves first is someone that's mature. And we get there. But what we hope is that as we um, challenge ourselves with all these words that we're sharing and we look more towards the Bible and the perfect example of Jesus, we understand that we need to reflect on ourselves first. Next, Christian counselling. I've shared with you all openly and transparently about my personal journey with counselling and how for me it's actually been the highlight of my year. I got to sit and intentionally confront things that I didn't even know were there or things that I did know were there and I just wasn't really intentional about addressing them. So I encourage all of you, these are practical steps that you can take to address what you see. And lastly, being involved in healthy community. As I said, G2R, by God's grace, hopefully provides that platform for you. And there's many other forums as well that you can go to and be involved in healthy community. So we're nearly there. As I said, how do we address what we see? We covered that. Now what is our duty to do? Now what is it our duty to do? To keep on looking. As I said, 2020 vision was to see ourselves. Where are we at? It's not condemnation, but it's for pruning, maturing, and a life of fruitfulness. Look at these two parallel scriptures here, and, and we see one in the Old Testament, and we see one in the New. It said, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaves shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper. Whatever he does shall prosper. I believe this is prophetically speaking forward to what a life is like when us as believers allow the Holy Spirit to have the perfect way in us, to have to complete the work that is set for us to do in our hearts and also externally actively what we need to do in our communities what we need to do where god has placed us that's what it looks like our minds are controlled by the holy spirit's impulses and then we look at hebrews and it says therefore since we're also surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us looking on to jesus so we have a mirror, we have an example. Jesus mirrored the Father, we mirror him. Perfect unity. And we mirror him by the Holy Spirit. Again, perfect unity. For he is the author and finisher of our faith. I submit to you that the maturity of an individual is someone that can endure. 
I all know everyone in this chat to some degree has been through trials. But I haven't mentioned it on here, but in James it says, count it all joy when you experience various trials. Do you know why? Because it actually verifies your faith. And let me break it down into layman's term. If you had a friend that every time it got hard was nowhere to be found, that would show you the test or the quality of their friendship. But for those of you that have close friends in your life, you approve them based on what? How long they endured with you through all of the trials you experience. Because ultimately, those are the friends that you remember. Those are the friends you trust. Those are the friends that you validate. But guess what? Jesus' faithfulness goes before us and empowers us to endure the things that we experience through his Holy Spirit. So it's not something we do in our own strength. So that's the good news. So looking onto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged. You know, some of you in this season might be thinking, as, as Ruben mentioned about identity, and you might be seeing all these things about yourself and think, oh, this is disgusting. How can I, how can I be like this? What, what errors have I made? But the joy is God isn't saying that this is you. He's saying this is the situation you're in and this is where I want to take you to. That's an encouragement for someone right now. Your situation is not who you are. Your actions are not who you are. Your identity has been affirmed by Christ. And what he's trying to do is pull you, pull you out of your situation so that you can walk in the identity that he's given you. Because what good is it to be called something that you don't walk out? What good is it? What good is it for me to have a profession as a builder, but in fact, I'm a gardener? It doesn't align. So what God's working us through the Holy Spirit is, is to bring what he said about us and what we do into perfect alignment. And that is a journey that is joyful. It seems painful at times, but as it says in Hebrews, discipline seems unpleasant at the time, but it bears the fruit later on. It bears the fruit later on because you realize that you're a legitimate son. You know, and I'm going to get really real here because I remember when, you know, I was a bit younger and I used to speak to some of my friends and I, I was shocked. I personally used to complain about, you know, my parents always getting on to me and checking up on me. What time will you be home? Curfews, all of this stuff. But it was interesting when I spoke to my friends who I seemingly thought had the life that I wanted, whose parents never checked up on them. They told me something very interesting. They said that, they would prefer my situation. I said, why? Why would you want that continuous hassle? And they said something so profound. They said, because it shows that they care. And I submit to you today, the reason why God is showing you these things in this season is because he cares for you. Because he's paid a precious price for you with his own blood. And now he wants you to walk out a life worthy of the calling you've received, which is a calling as a son or a daughter. Guys, I know you already know, the time for games is over, the time for deliberating is over, because I've said it so many times, time is wrapping up. The world is showing itself for what it is, fallen. That's the essence of this world we live in, guys. It's fallen. There's death, there's sin, there's violence, there's, selfish, there's, there's selfishness, there's conceit, there's pride, there's arrogance. All of these things are the result of a fallen world. But God said, listen, I'm coming. I'm riding on the clouds. Wait me. But in the meantime, walk like me. Walk like me. Keep on looking, guys. So this is the transformative journey that we're all on. We're consistently being transformed. It says, now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the sorry excuse me the glory of the lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as from the lord the spirit now let's break that down a little bit it starts off by saying that the lord is spirit and where the holy spirit is there is liberty 
If you backtrack to Romans in your own time, you will see that as the new covenant comes in, it's called the law of the spirit and life. So it's a law of liberty. But now what it's saying is that with unveiled faces, as new covenant believers who are not blinded or veiled by the law, we behold Christ and his glory. And as we behold him, as we look to him, as we focus our attention on him, as we look in the word and look at the way he handles situations, what happens is our man, our earthly man gets transformed into the same image. And what happens? We go from glory to glory and from strength to strength. And I want to give you an interesting fact that I found out. I want you guys to go check it as well. Greek, as we know, is the language that the New Testament was written in. And it's written in something called the continuous present tense. And what that means is that as well as them stating something that's already happened, they also state something that is happening and is going to happen. So let me break that down for you now. When we were saved, we received the Holy Spirit. That was our seal of salvation. We were saved. But we're also in the process of being saved. And then when Christ returns, we will officially reach our culmination of being saved. So what happens is when they wrote in Greek, there was no tenses. So they used one word to cover all of the tenses. And what that meant is that in order to find out the tense, you would have to read the whole context. So that's just a little fun fact for you. But what does this mean for us as believers? It means that we can have an adventure with God where day to day, every aspect aspect and area of our life is being made to look more like him no one can come to me today and say that as soon as you got saved everything was fine we know that's not the reality and we know that's not true but what we do know is that if you are to look at your life maybe over however long you've been saved when the time period there are things that god has transformed in you and that's what we're going to lead the discussion into as we go into it next we are called as believers to go from glory to glory because there's no end in Christ. There's no graduation point until he comes back. So until then, every day is an adventure. Every day is an opportunity to look more like him. Every day is an opportunity to express his love. Every day is an opportunity to be corrected by his love and to address what you see in the mirror. Every single day is that opportunity because as Bella said at the start, we do not know when he will call us home. Tomorrow is not promised. Life is merely but a vapour. This that you see on me, my skin, it's a shell. This is not me. I am spirit. You are spirit. And this, this shell was made from dust, and to dust it shall return. So I want to encourage you, as we mirror Christ in this life, focus on eternal things. Don't let the cares of life sway you. Yes, I know you've got work. Yes, I know you've got goals. Yes, I know you've got dreams. But guess what? God says, listen, if you look to me, those things are added bonuses. Those things are literally side dishes. That's the coleslaw. That's the fries. Come to me. <laughs> I'm the main course. Look at me. Focus on me. Digest me. Allow me to correct you. Allow me to love you. Because let me tell you this last thing. This transformative journey the love language of God is correction and rebuke. And you might not like how that sounds. But as I said earlier with the parent analogy, the Hebrews tells us if that if there is no discipline, then you're not a legitimate son or daughter of God. Because God's heart is to see his children progress from glory to glory, as it says here, until he comes home. And in Revelations, he says it, he addresses all the churches. He says, listen, I'm aware of what you're doing, but return to this. He's like that guidance coach that continues saying, mm, yeah, you did that well, but you could improve in this. And it's always constructive because that is the love language of God. And I don't want you to think of it as, a, as an angry beating and, a, and an authoritative kind of um, aggressive tone. No, it's a language of love that says, you know what, son, daughter, you're so much better than that. Come up higher, change this, tweak that. Look more like me, follow my example, follow my footsteps. Furthermore, hold my hand. You've grazed your leg, get back up. 
that's the essence of what a loving adventure and relationship with the father is all about so we're going to go into a time of discussion right now um as i just end on this last slide and i want you guys to get ready because i'm going to be asking you to review your walk with god and for you to share some of the ways in which you first were and how god has transformed you now to a place where you've matured because as we share that someone might be at where you used to be and will need encouragement to know that God is trying to get them to where you're at and vice versa. So in this last slide, we're going to talk about the journey of being conformed. Now, as you know, while the rest of the world endures all of these fallen aspects of the world from a place of uncertainty, we endure from a place of certainty. I'm telling you guys, if you don't realise it now, realise it now. Believers, Christians, are the most favoured people on the face of this earth. We endure all of these trials, all of these sorrows and deaths, from a place of assurance, not from a place of shoulda, coulda, woulda, not from a place of, mm, it might end well, um, I'm not sure. No, we have assurance. And if you need your assurance topped up, go to the scriptures, look at Revelation, look at the things that I'm about to share with you now. And I'm going to go through quickly because we need time for discussion. So one day, all tears, all pain, all death, all sin will cease to exist and we will be in a perfect earth beholding a perfect christ forever revelation 21 4 says and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will long, no longer be any death there will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain for the first things have passed away the first earth the first order of the earth that is fallen is going to pass away and there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth check that out for yourselves and lastly there will no longer be any curse and the throne of god and of the lamb will be in it and his bond servants will serve him. They will see his face. His name will be on their foreheads and there will no longer be any night and they will not have the need of light or of lamp nor of sun because the Lord will illuminate them and they will reign forever and ever. What a great promise. What a great joy that we can endure what's happening now in such a fallen world that is so difficult, but we can be assured that this is what awaits us. So God bless you guys. Love you. Um, and let's go into a time of discussion. Wait, quick question. Before go ahead, go ahead. You see bullet point three? Oh, wait, should I put it back up? Yeah, go on, which Please. one? Hello? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Go on. Hello? Has our connection gone, guys? Let me know. Okay, cool. Hopefully, if our question comes back, um, we can bring it up. But I'm just going to pick on some people um, because I hope you've all had a chance to think about your Christian journey and think about areas of your life that God has completely transformed, completely transformed from one deg degree of glory to the next. Um, and I want you to share that with someone with the hope of encouraging them that on this journey as believers, there is hope for us. There is joy for us. And every day is an opportunity to look more like him, to have areas of our life conformed into the image that was predestined for us to look like in the first place. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure if Ruben's going to come back and say something, but I'm going to go to Ebbs, my guy Ebbs. I didn't even see his so, head. do you see bullet point three? Oh, okay. Can you, yeah, you yeah. Put it back, but do you remember, right? Yeah, yeah no, I'm going to go back to it now. Oh. Is it on the last slide? Which one? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you now. You see bullet point three, right? This one, Revelation yeah. twenty-one four. Yeah. Oh, curiosity. So is that only like for Christians, or is it like for everyone? Do you know? Well, so this, as far as I understand it, is to the people that are bond servants of Christ. This is to the oh, people okay. that have that are living in Christ, and their life is hidden in Christ. And this is the culmination of the world ending and then being brought into a new world where Christ is that light. There's no longer any need for sun, no sin, no tears, no mourning, just pure bliss and joy. That's my understanding. I don't know if anyone else has anything to offer. I've just seen that my mentor, Mike, is on here, so he would be well equipped to maybe speak more to it. Mike, I don't know if you had anything to add. If you can hear me. I can't even see him. But yeah, um, that is my understanding. 
um, as it stands. Okay, cool. So, guys, I'm going to ask Ebs to start off and just share with me um, somewhere in your life when you started your walk, however long you've been walking with the Lord, an area where the Lord has really transformed you um, and where you are now. Okay. Um, <clears throat> where the Lord has transformed me. Um, I think for me, um, okay, yeah, I think for me, um, one very um, profound area that does come to mind is fear. Um, yes. but fear in terms of relationships. Um, I went through, I was someone that went through a lot of hurt as it pertained to um, just just relationships in general, having um, um, people um, abuse your trust um, and, mm -hmm. and cause you to, you know, well, I reacted in a way that um, I, I was someone who um, didn't really trust people, hid myself away at times. Mm -hmm. um, but I think over just just walking with the Lord and understanding how He loves us, and mm. understanding um, just how how reliable He is, for for lack mm. of a better word, and the people He begins to surround you with, because I think there's there's that lovely duality in in this walk with God, whereby He shows you who He is, but He also shows you who He is through people as well. Amen. So, um, yeah, I th um, just surrounding me with um, brothers and sisters in Christ who kind of changed my idea ideas about you know people per se, and, and showed me who he was and who um, and just just who he was. And so uh, over time, you know, um, those wounds began to heal, and I can um, confidently say that I'm much better. Obviously, it's a it's a daily walk, and there are things where that like, he's still undoing in that area. But I just thank God for how far he's brought me so i hope that answers the question amen no that does perfectly um i don't know if anyone had any specific other questions as well i noticed i didn't speak directly to them so if you do please um put them in the chat um but i also want to ask um you michelle um for you from the start of your walk until now i'm not sure how long you've been walking with the lord but what what would be one area where you you can confidently see and say that the lord has transformed you um, for me, well, I was baptised from the age of 13 right. um, up until now, so it's been a while. Mm -hmm. um, but I think one key area was is definitely my confidence, because mm. um, I was quite a shy person, didn't really talk to anyone, kept myself to myself, mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't really sociable at all. Right. Um, but God's really brought me out of it, and it's weird because you feel like sometimes... Um, that God is going to create this whole miracle that changes your whole person instantly when you get baptised. Mm. Like you said, it's nothing like that. And it happens mm. gradually. So yeah. it'd be things like where I'd help out um, sometimes on the worship team or come up and do a little testimony at church. Um, yeah. And those things kind of built my faith and also my journey in God that gave me the confidence to then end up running our youth services, sometimes all by myself. Um mm -hmm hosting events and stuff that I've done. So God's really brought me out of my shell and given me the confidence. And um, a lot of people say that to me, they're like, oh, I would never have thought that you would be doing that, Michelle. Like you was never like that. You didn't even want to talk to anyone or go out mm. nowhere and look at you now. So it's yeah. something that happens gradually, but when you get there, you can feel it's different and you know that it's not you, um, that it's God. Right. So that's Amen. one area I'd say that yeah, God has really transformed and changed me. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, Isabella, could you speak to us? I know you've shared already on YouTube and different things, but you can share in this call with us transparently. Uh, <laughs> I feel like everyone knows my story, but I think the one thing that empowers me is when I started to shift my mentality about what I need to do to make sure I'm showing my love for God rather than, you know, the, the whole point of Christianity, which is God loving us first. And mm. when I got into, you know, when I got to like grasp that, that revelation in itself, it was like every single thing that I was pursuing, my knowledge of Christ, all of that, it translated into love because the, the knowledge of Jesus should empower you to do these things. Right. So yeah. little things like, you know, emotional abuse in my family, all of that. I mean, really and truly, it should have been anger for the rest of my life. It wow. should have been, it should have been 
it should have been like, I am never speaking to you again. But, um, you know, even speaking with like counselors, etc., even Alex's counselor um, really blessed me. Um, he shared a word which was unforgiveness keeps the pain alive. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I feel like I, I, I don't think that my necessarily my, I don't have to know the, the, how do I explain it? For me, maturity was never about, I know, I know more than someone else. I know better than someone else. For me, maturity was how I walked, walked out Christ and Amen. how I decided to love in all circumstances. Because with, with that, I know for a fact that Jesus lives within me because he's empowered me to do something as difficult as that in the face of adversity. Do you know what I mean? Like how many of us can be crucified on a cross and say, Father, forgive them. Come like, on. I think maturity is just is just genuinely love, like love, 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 love. Um, but in terms of like, in terms of like conforming to that, I'm, I'm genuinely still, you know, in certain areas, I'm still learning how to um, be patient. I'm, I'm still learning how to, um, you know, still, still show unconditional love. <laughs> mm. It's so difficult. <laughs> But yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely getting there. But I genuinely do see like the transition in how I used to be um, in terms of like very careless with my words and very, very like aggressive into just being somebody who's, you know, soft-spoken, gentle, loving, kind, and being able to yeah. relate to someone else to understand that, okay, do you know what? I'm starting to see you for, you know, what you're going through and... I'm starting to see you the way God sees you because I know you're not acting out because you know you hate me, but I feel like there's something deeper there. Mm. I don't know. I think I'm waffling now. <laughs> oh, thank you for sharing. And I just want to pause there and really just encourage everybody that this is the purpose of G2R, to grow together in the knowledge of these things, but also in the reality of these things, that these things are not overnight things. These are things we labor together in prayer and intentionality, but also in encouragement and admonishing and allowing the Lord to correct us so that we look like Christ in every area of our life. That's, that's the purpose of this. That's the purpose of this walk. You know, I continue to say it, every day is an adventure with God to learn something new about yourself and to learn how to express love to people that don't deserve it. That's the, that's the, the reality of it. If we really want to get real to people that don't deserve it. But Jesus modeled it perfectly as Isabella touched on. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And that's a powerful statement that speaks about our heart posture towards this fallen world that we're living in with all these issues that are swirling around us, with all this pride and all this, this violence that is swirling around us. It's difficult to navigate, but we have a hope. We have a strength in the Holy Spirit and we have a body of Christ, which we join to in, in almost an army format and we all march together championing the same thing let's keep loving let's keep loving and again I want all of you to really ponder and ask yourself Lord what is it in my life that's blocking me from loving the way that you would and I, and I submit to you guys I ask myself that question every day uh, Mike do you want to share with us something that's one area um, that God's really transformed in your life since the start of your walk until now I'm, I'm, I'm Mike right Yes, your mic, yes. <laughs> um, I, I thought it said empty on my screen, but, you know, I, I do wear glasses, so maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, no, this is brilliant to just listen to. Um, I, of course, can speak for the next two hours about growing and failing and stuff like that. I'm, I'm kind of the king of failures. Um, <laughs> and the king of beating myself up as well. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, I think one way... Um, but I can, I think God is really, uh, or is maturing me still, is in the area, well, I'll give you two ways. Uh, yeah. one, one in the area of, um, you know, I, I was very cold when I was younger. Um, you know, I was a sports guy, kind of very data, numbers, just your typical guy, I guess. Um, and I just didn't really get this heart of flesh thing. So, you know, in, in, in Ezekiel 36, uh, 25 and 26, when, when when we're, we're told that God's going to give us a new spirit and a new heart, I, I think he missed, he missed me with that one because I have a new spirit, but I cold and, you know, very stoic. People would describe me as very abrasive and, and rude and just, just, just uh, angry all the time. Mm. Um, and throughout time, I think God has just really 
helped me understand um, how, how to love, <laughs> yeah. how to love people, and how to have our uh, that heart of flesh. Um, you know, I'm reminded of First Corinthians where where we we see God described as the Father of all compassion. That's right. Uh, we learned about compassion in the last four years. I've lost fourteen people. Wow. Um, they've gone to heaven. Um, so, so um, sympathy and all that kind of stuff. It's just something that's really matured me in, uh, and it's still growing me in because I have a proclivity sometimes of slipping back into that kind of cold and legal kind of way. And God just helps that happen. I know that seems like a small thing, but for me, it's a it's a pretty big thing. Because folks who know me now, some of them would be shocked to know that I was this cold and stoic guy. Of course, some people can still see it. Um, <laughs> I give I give glory to God to that for that because it's it's all been Him. And the second way I think more more visceral, and for me, I'm still so grateful for is historic battles I had with masturbation and and sin and pornography and stuff like that. Mm. Growing up, being a very uh, uh, um, a very macho type of male. Um, sex was a very important thing for me. And if not sex, then masturbation and pornography. And if you told me when I was younger that I would not be watching pornography, stuff like that, I would have been like, well, no, of course not. It's impossible. I must watch it. Mm. <laughs> uh, but, but, but God through the Holy Spirit, um, but also through just helping me understand what's actually going on. Because you know, what the devil does is cloud our view of so many different things that we we just can't quite see things the way god sees them so yeah. over years you know god, god has really helped me with that to see it the way god see it sees it to see the trade off when god says hey mike sorry when the devil says hey mike you want this uh for this and god goes no this guy is a smoking mirrors here's what he's offering you he's offering you terrible yeah. existential angst and i'm offering you um, maybe not temporary lower pleasure, but an eternal joy and, and, and freedom. And um, yeah, that, that's been a, 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 a what five year, six year journey. And um, yeah. through that, I think he's helped other people as well. Amen. Thank you so much for that, Mike. And yeah, guys, again, just want to pause on that note. Um, as we can all see, it's, it's a progressive glory that we all get to experience as we run this race, I, I just had a picture as everybody was speaking as us, all of us on this track, call it the race of faith. And we're all just going round and round. And some of us, we stop at certain points. Some of us, we need a breather. Some of us, the coach is talking to us. You can see as the Holy Spirit, some of us have fallen over. Some of us have gone into other people's lanes, but we're all running for that same prize, which is ultimately a, an, an eternity with Christ an eternity with Christ. So I want you to be encouraged that the things that you're facing now are not your finish line. <laughs> They're in fact your starting point. As you begin to address them with the Holy Spirit, he ticks it off and he says, let's go on to the next son or daughter. Let's go on to the next because I want you to continually reflect me in every area. Um, Atanuke, I know you had something to share. And guys, please raise your hands if any thought comes to you and you want to share as well. We really want to challenge ourselves with this word, but also speak real and address some of the things that maybe God is showing us in this present moment. Atanuke. Hi, everyone. Um, hey, I just have a quick question. So when it comes to like forgiveness, because... Um, obviously the Holy Spirit is going to prompt you to forgive people. Mm. Um, what's the difference between like forgiving someone and then just being a pushover? So for example, let's mm. say that your parent is constantly rude to you. Like, is it, mm. is it all right to just share with them that you feel that way? I like to, so for example, like you'll probably still feel hurt there. So does that mm. mean that you have to forgiven? And also like another scenario, if you're in a relationship, um, mm. like not married yet but just a relationship and that person cheats on you obviously mm. you forgive them but mm. does that now mean that you have to get back into the same relationship with them as in like, what's the difference between forgiving and being a pushover <laughs> that's a loaded question um isabella said you can set boundaries and still be loving what's everybody else's thoughts type in the chat before i speak to this joel i know you had a testimony that spoke directly to this last week so i might ask you to speak after um, but anybody else, what's your thoughts? Type in the chat for me. Let me know. Um, how, do we, how do we strike that balance? How do we forgive and not be a pushover? I would pose this question. Was Jesus a pushover? Mm. 
Let's, let's contemplate it. With love comes correction. Yep, communicate respectfully. Brilliant. I like these thoughts. Articulate with respect and love. Fantastic. Joe, I don't know if you wanted to speak to that for, for a little bit, speaking from your experience of what God did with you and how difficult it was, how you navigated a balance or how you managed to navigate it through God's lens and maybe not your, your emotions. So if you could speak to that maybe for a little bit. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, hey, guys. Hope you guys can hear me. Yep, we can. Um, yeah, I would say for the pushover part, you know, I, would, I wouldn't even put it in terms of like a relationship, like boy or girl relationship. I would actually say a relationship with like a parent, for example. Um, you know, where, and I shared this last week, and I'm not going to go too much detail with it, but, you know, kind of forgiving, I had to forgive uh, one of my parents for something that they did. Um, and you know what, it's, it's not, it's not easy. And as you kind of said there, you know, you don't want it really want it to seem as though you're like a pushover, um, you know, because they could then, you know, they, they might not respond. And obviously, you know, everyone's parents are different. Um, and so you, you might not, uh, you might not expect it to be the way how you, uh, kind of want, but you don't have to tolerate the behavior anymore. You know, just because you've forgiven, it doesn't mean you now just continue to accept that continuous behavior. You now have to, to say, look, you know, I've forgiven you, but there needs to be change. You know, I mean, there needs to be boundaries. Um, I think that's what um, Daniel put in the chat there. There needs to be boundaries that you need to put things in place. And I know I just used a parent example there. You're thinking, how can you put boundaries on your parents? But, you know, it just, it just really depends, you know, and I would say for a relationship, of course, you know, if someone has obviously like cheated on you and broken that real trust there, you know, trust has been broken. Um, so you, you think to yourself, you know what, is that the right person you want to stay with? Set those boundaries. You can still speak to them. They can still be your friend, of course, but is it the wise decision for them to still be in a relationship with you? That's what I would personally say. Okay. Thank you for that. Don't know if anyone else has any thoughts. Um, so please raise your hand if you do. Um, but of course, this is a situation that first of all, is not a one size fits all approach. Secondly, having said that, I do think there's certain principles as believers that we should adhere to. And for me, forgiveness in, in the context of, you know, people that, that have wronged you and all of that stuff, you have to be honest with yourself at, with where you're at. Forgiveness and even in the context of you loving someone doesn't gloss over what the reality is. So forgiveness would not look like me saying, I forgive you and then not addressing or speaking to what has happened. That, 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 wouldn't be, that wouldn't be practical. It also would be a facade because what you would end up doing is proclaiming that you've forgiven, but in your heart, it would still be mucky. There would still be um, uh, an animosity. There would still be a hurt. There would still be a, an, an appetite for vengeance. So I think forgiveness has to start with you as an individual first, looking at the condition of your own heart, looking at the things that you're holding on to. And that was the, the purpose of the title, Mirror, Mirror. It's often really difficult. And one thing that my counsellor helped me to do is in situations where I felt wronged, let me put myself in the other person's shoes just for a moment. Not saying that they're right, but what it does is it helps me to understand what I may have done to contribute or also where my heart is actually at in my view of them. So I'll give you a very practical example. In past relationships, I felt really betrayed and I was expressing this to him. And I was letting out my heart. I was re reeling off all the things that I felt like I had been wronged, um, all the situations I'd been wronged in. And he said, if the person was sitting next to you right now, what do you think they would say about your contribution? And there's this, this power in, in, in empathy and in flipping the table so that you can understand, hold on, I might have been a very perpetrator of the thing that I'm actually hurt by. So I just want to encourage you in that sense to really endorse those techniques, to, to turn the table sometimes. I'm not saying that, your your feelings are invalid or you know the person is more right and you're wrong not not any of that 
But I just really encourage a looking within first because when you can get your heart right, it means even your response to people's hurt or people's actions is different. Um, Isabella, I know you wanted to share something next as well. And then I think, Mike, you look like you had something to say. I saw you popping up and down. So you might be able to speak to this after. Isabella, go ahead. Um, I think what came to mind is that Bible verse, forgive 70 times, seven times. And yeah. I think directly speaking to my sister, when she make me a cushion, I think in mm. that case, if you, read, if you read that verse in its most simplest, meaning you'll be thinking why am I forgiving that many times then does that mean I'm a pushover but I feel like the the most the the most harsh truth I've had to face with in this whole period of healing and and self discovery oh my god I sound like Jada Pinkett I can't um <laughs> in, in, in this time of discovering myself I think I was so gutted to realize that I'm only responsible for my actions and my emotions you know when when it says that do not let the sun go down on your ang while you're angry, mm. I think for me it's like the next person that offended me could be sleeping and well, and I'm just they're so angry. And I'm not saying I'm not saying that all guys like yeah just forgive, just pray and read the Bible. Like I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is the only reason why we can forgive is because we have the ultimate, you know, um, the ultimate what's it called advocate in us. Like I feel like I feel like. The fact that you have Jesus in you should empower you, proper empower you and strengthen you to really forgive. Because I'm telling you, you cannot do it with your own might. It's, it's so difficult. Like even with forgiveness in Greek, it literally means to leave alone, to div divorce, to, mm. to just um, forget it. But that to forgive doesn't necessarily mean now that you, um, it, it, it's to do with your emotional state. Like you, you can still, you can still like, say to god like god i i need to heal in this area but i feel like the whole point of forgiving is not to hold them to it anymore if alex offended me and i was to keep saying it over him i i'm, I'm gonna pay you back i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that i don't think that's forgiving but for me to be like you know what alex i forgive you but you know what um i need to heal and guys i'm telling you right now that that's exactly what happened like we both had to go seek counseling but we, we were both in the process of forgiving each other because again, boundaries, respect, but also forgiveness. And it's not just, it's not just for you and to really see them, but it's for you to genuinely, genuinely show the love of Christ as well. So yeah, that's just what I wanted to say. And thank you for sharing that, Isabella. And yeah, that's the, that's the real reality of it, guys. Forgiveness is for us. <laughs> it is actually for us. As, as difficult as it sounds, I feel like some people view forgiveness as we're letting them off the hook. No, we know that vengeance is the Lord. And at the end of the day, there, there is a, a reciprocating consequence for every act that is done, whether you're inside or outside of Christ. But what we do in Christ is allow our heart to be in the right place, allow the right spirit to be renewed within us so that God it hasn't got anything to hold against us. And he can sort out whatever he needs to sort out on our behalf. And we can rest in the fact that, OK, our heart is pure and right before the Lord. And we're being intentional about keeping it that way. You know, as Isabella shared, you know, forgiveness was was a difficult thing to engage with but i believe that it's intertwined with the healing as well because as you go through that healing of your heart and as i said those areas that are blocking your ability to love are removed then all of those beautiful aspects of god can flow through you just like a river um mike i don't know if you had any thoughts to share um you look like no i was <clears throat> i was actually <clears throat> i was trying to digest my pizza that was, oh, okay, cool. that was where I was right up and down. But now, I mean, scripture I would add to some of this is I'll take a look at Paul's defense to Felix in Acts 24. I was trying to find it. It was in Acts 22, but it's in Acts 24. Um, and um, uh -huh. uh, where else is good to go to? Um, so so uh, Acts 24, 16, Paul says he, he, he desires, obviously we know Paul was wrong many, many times, but he desired to be a man of clear conscience. Um, absorbing himself of the moral of the, um, the mental weight of trying to even keep up with who's offended you and who owes you what. Um, yeah. In Second Corinthians six three, uh, there's a point made there about obstacles and, and, and what those mental blockages again do for, for, for your mind um, and for your ministry as well. You know, the, the only other thing I would say is, from my own personal ex personal experience, I, I think where I'm, I'm actually a very bad judge. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I'm not very good. God, God, God is God is a good judge, and I think 
when we let go of offense sometimes, even when it seems like a stupid amount of times as the lady uh, asked, um, we're given space for God to, to judge, and to, mm. to tip the scales and to ensure there's balance. And forgiving people is actually an act of faith. Um, and people often say it's for us and they say that it lets us off the hook because we're free from all the guilt and that's absolutely true. But it's also an act of faith because what you're doing is you're trusting God to, yeah. to, to, to make everything way up in balance. Um, and so, so be empowered, be empowered. Pray, pray that God will empower you to have the faith to forgive, knowing that, you know, in Exodus, uh, God establishes himself as the God of justice. Um, God yeah. cares about justice way more than you do. And the issue, one thing you should be aware of is, how come when you rule, it's always you that's wrong? <laughs> you know, it shows you how bad of a judge you are. So I think uh, there's a bit of humility we all need to, to, to walk in. So as to say, God, I'm having faith in you to be the arbiter, the referee, and to mm-hmm. do a just job of it. Amen. Thank you, Mike. Um, Ebs, you could share briefly, and then I want to hear from some other people before we really pray together, actually. Um, yeah. Talk. Yeah. Please, Ebs. Amen. Um, I, I, I didn't want to say anything too much, um, too long, but I just wanted to... Um, I just wanted to say that um, certain, like, you're definitely not a pushover for wanting to forgive anyone. And I think um, one thing that I always have to remember is, like, all of us were made in the image of God. And secondly, um, the Lord loves whoever we're hurt by as much as he loves us, if that makes sense. Like, we're all loved by him. So it's seeing seeing um the person as god's creation and not as the person that wronged you and trying to restore your perspective of that person to view them as someone who is loved dearly by god and if you love and if you wholeheartedly love god it's it's to ask him to you know help me see this person the way you see um this individual if that makes sense so mm-hmm. I can love them adequately because we're all called to, I think it says in 1 Peter, to love each other fervently. Mm-hmm. And ferv- it's, it's not just love people, it's love them fervently. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there's a, we we're, we're actually have a responsibility to love um, with, with all our hearts, laying, our, laying ourselves down for our brothers and sisters. So, um, yeah, I think that, 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 that's what I'd say. That's what's really helped me with forgiveness asking the lord to really change my you know perspective and the way i see and people as hard as it is sometimes it takes a long time but you'll be you'll be um surprised what the holy spirit can do but yeah amen and just to add on the top of that um we know that it's the holy spirit that empowers us this is not something we do in our own strength this is not something we do in our own might it's by the holy spirit and it's by us being convicted by the truth as isabella said there's some hard pills to swallow about this walk but we know that they're for our good. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else want to share any thoughts? We're going to wrap up soon. In prayer. Anybody else got anything on their heart? Questions? You know, things that they want to um, attack or address? Anybody else? Please raise your hand. If not, I'm going to come and ask someone. Mr. PC, you wanted to share briefly. Go ahead. Yeah, um, one of the things I would say that I've learned along this journey is the fact that um, your, your personality isn't necessarily always a defect when you're mm. coming into Christ. Um, a lot of the time, let's just say, for example, a lot of the time, if somebody is a, a very committed person or they're very attached or um, they're very uh, hardworking or very chatty, um, a lot of the time when we come into Christ, we think we have to come kind of like completely transform our personality to turn into this like monk or or somebody who doesn't talk to people and they just sit there and pray for 24 hours a day um <laughs> but something that i've learned is that god uses your personality absolutely uh, in a way that can be used for his kingdom to enhance it so mm. if you're somebody who is ultra committed like you're a committer whatever relationship you get into you you give your all then he'll use that in his relationship with you where he, he allows you the room to be able to commit to him fully. Or if you're somebody who is very talkative, he'll use that so that you can evangelize and he'll give you the platforms or the open doors 
to be able to use that talkative nature uh, in a positive way. Um, and I just want to encourage anybody who's just walking into the faith. Um, yes. A lot of these personality traits are, are very good. It's just the way that they were used when you weren't in the faith were mm. not for good reason. So now that you're in Christ, he can use them for his better purposes. Amen. Thank you so much, Ira. And just to second that, everything is a tool in the hands of God. <laughs> even the evil in the world, even the bad is a tool for God to display his glory. Um, Rian, you had your hand up. What do you want to share with us or what question do you have? Um, so for me, I feel like this session like has really spoken to me. Um, I feel like with me, um, I've always kind of had in the back of my head that um, it's time that I do kind of become more mature and transform. But I think it's like yeah. in my head, I've always thought like I'm not ready. Mm. But obviously I know that the time it's time to get ready because the way the world's going. But I feel like <laughs> I'm doing it for the wrong reasons because I'm doing it out of fear of not going to hell or, you know, fear because mm. you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And even like the whole persecution situation where like Christians will be persecuted. I feel like it's a whole fear thing. Like I'm kind mm. of too scared to transform because I'm scared of like the persecution and what's going to happen in the future um mm. but I feel like with me like I I know where I know what my faith should be and I know that there is like a seed there and I am growing but I just feel like that that's the barrier that's stopping me from going forward mm. if I'm being transparent but I think um what this has like kind of taught me is that like it's kind of time you know it's like mm. you've got to make the but I think it's just for me it's like a fear thing yeah um but yeah that's just something that i was gonna gonna share my kind of honest situation yeah thank you for being so transparent and we're gonna pray for that in a moment um guys if there is anything because the truth is we're all progressively going through a specific season that god has put us in to address a specific thing within ourselves that needs to look more like him so whether that's fear whether that's the way we treat people, whether that's unforgiveness, God is speaking to that issue tonight and he wants us to address it as a company of believers. Um, I don't know if anyone else had anything to share. I saw Ryan's hand was up. If you want to share briefly, um, we really do want to hear from people tonight before we pray. Um, so before I came to Christ, um, I used to love to debate, especially in like history and whether it came to like sport and stuff like that. I always loved... A debate and um sometimes the debates would get out of hand and insults mm -hmm. would thrown and i would always try to like get the upper hand mm -hmm. and it's only like recently since coming to christ where i've realized i've actually stopped trying to get the upper hand so recently i'd say yeah. maybe three months ago i was having a debate with a few of my friends and one of my friends he threw an insult at me mm -hmm. and i literally i stood there and i looked at him and I waited to, you know, should I throw an insult back at him? Because I'm the, I would be that type of guy who would, if you insult, if you insult me, then I'm coming back to crucify. <laughs> That's <laughs> real, yeah. God. Funny enough, today I was in the supermarket and this woman, she came at me. And I was just listening to my music and I was clicking my fingers because I was literally, I was in, I was just enjoying myself. And she just came at me for no reason. Mm -hmm. so she was muttering something under her breath and same in that same situation if someone has some, something to say I'm that guy that would say if you want to say something say it with your whole chest mm -hmm. <laughs> then I would clap back yeah. but honestly <laughs> I, she she was muttering stuff underneath her breath and I didn't say anything so I walked away mm -hmm. and then I walked I came across her again a few moments later and she saw me we saw each other and she still was muttering stuff under her breath but i didn't say anything and it's only now from hearing your message and i've realized like Ra, looking in that mirror as to who i was before and who i am now yes that is completely different amen yeah thank you so much we love just that, man. and that's the joy in christ guys we can look back at the testimonials of our life at the milestones of our life and like remember when i used to be like that you know there's a saying that you know 
I thank God for where I am, but I thank God that I'm not where I used to be. <laughs> and I can definitely attest to that. Atanuke, I know you've had your hand up for a while. Sorry, we'll come to you next. Um, what did you have to ask or add or share? Hi, everyone. Um, I just wanted to know, mm -hmm. let's say if you're angry with someone, because the Bible says um, you can be angry, but just not sin. Yeah. If you're angry with someone and like you don't outwardly express anything, but in your head, like you're saying mm. all sorts of things, do you still need to apologize to that person? That's what I'm debating at the moment in my personal life. I don't want mm. to. I think God's teaching me about humility. Mm. um in this season i forgot to say at the beginning but yeah um am i enjoying it nope but really. <laughs> so yeah is it is it a sin to like be inwardly angry at someone and like, like not no express it to them but inside you're saying oh like this person is making me irate mm. thank you for, sh for sharing that um immediately for me what comes to mind is jesus's arrival on the scene and his first sermon you know, he addresses this. He says, you know, you guys thought it was all about external, about what you do and what you don't do. But I say to you, any man who so much as looks at a woman um, with lust has already committed adultery in his heart. So we have this conversion from outward expression only to an inward condition of the heart. And what I would say to you, Atanuke, is God is purposely revealing this to you because he wants to address the state of your heart. It's not so much important what you do but it's important the posture of your heart because why the posture of your heart actually informs what you do um so the two things are linked so what i would say to you is is be real with what you're feeling in the, your heart be real with your thoughts towards that individual write them down pray over them and submit them to god because what we don't want to do and i feel like we err in this in, in in the faith too much we try and dismiss and gloss over and say do this or do that and try and speak to it with one action or one scripture but what it is, is an intentional act to address it. As I've, I've shared in the presentation today, there's many ways to do that. But what I believe would be good for you, Atanuke, is to write down what you're feeling, pray over it, take it to God, and let him do his perfect work in you. I hope, I hope that helps. Um, so, guys, um, we are about to pray. I don't know if anyone had any other thoughts. I don't want to keep everyone too late. Um, but at the same time, I still want the Lord to do his work. Um, anybody else got any questions, thoughts before we pray? Anybody at all? Going once. Going twice. Okay. Brilliant. Um, yeah. We're going to pray. Um, who can I ask to pray? I'm going to pray first, but I might ask some people to, to pray as well. Also, guys, is there anything specific? I know some of you have mentioned and been transparent. Um, to some of the things you want prayed for specifically so if you could write those in the chat now um or you can send them privately to me um it's up to you but i, was, I do want to pray specifically to some things and also some other things i feel in my spirit that are specific to, to all of us just as believers as we navigate this faith journey um so yeah i'll give you a moment just to type that to me um before i before i close us out in prayer um so yeah if you could send those through I'll just pray for us all. Amen. Thank you for sending that perfect patience. Anybody else? Okay, I'll go ahead with some of the other things that people mentioned throughout the call. Anyway, if you still have any, please send it through. Waiting on God. Distractions. Yes, Lord. Yes. Father, we thank you for this evening. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together to confront ourselves and to learn more about you. Because ultimately, Lord, you've put your Holy Spirit in us to progressively transform us into your image. Lord, I pray that every area of our lives, Lord God, would begin to look more like you. Father God, draw up, Father God, well up in us this desire, Lord, to love and remove any obstacle, Father God, that would obstruct us from loving as you do. Lord, open the eyes of our hearts. Help us to have your perspective. Lord, build up in us perfect patience. Lord, help us to wait on you to renew our strength. Lord, speak to those distractions and help them to be removed, Lord God, as we focus our attention on you, the author and finisher of 
our faith. Lord, I pray for that issue of unforgiveness, Lord, which is plaguing a generation. Lord, there's so much pain, there's so much trauma, and there's so much hurt. But I pray right now by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would begin to uproot, that you would begin to heal, that you would begin to cleanse hearts, Father God, so that they would be soft and palpable for you to mold into the image that you have. Father God, help us to be the clay and let you be the potter, Father God. Mold us into your image. Lord, I thank you for this company of believers that you brought together this evening. I thank you for your Holy Spirit speaking a word in season. And I pray, Lord, that this word would not fall on deaf ears, but that it would bear much fruit. So that again, in a, in a few months time or however long, we can look upon ourselves and see how the areas that we spoke about, Lord, you've dealt with them. Lord, have your perfect work in us in this season, Lord. And help us to enjoy all that is ahead because of the joy that is set before us, which is living with you forever in jesus name and all the, the saints and everybody said amen 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 amen, amen. amen. Love amen. You guys. and so guys this has been g2r um i hope you've enjoyed it we're here to serve you um and god is serving us through this even as leaders so i hope that you guys will stay with us along this journey stay informed and we are looking to create some kind of like accountability hubs, some, some group chats so that we can really be discipled on this journey together. Not, not by individuals, but by the Holy Spirit um, as he guides us into all truth, as he helps us along this journey, as he matures us and helps us to look more like Christ. So bless you guys. Love you. Um, take care and enjoy your evening. Bye. Bye.